people said I was disrespectful of you. And the next time I asked you to do the podcast, you said no, because it's a That's hologram. That's not what happened. But I felt bad. Right. <laughs> Hi, this is Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his daughter. And I can't tell you how excited we are to have the illustrious Bill Burr in illustrious. the house. But he is illustrious. I know, right? I'm illustrious. I don't, I've been called a lot of things, <laughs> but not illustrious. Uh, isn't it, uh, illustrious is a, a longer, I took Latin in school, but, but you illustrate. Isn't that, it, does it have something to do with illustrate? I think you show but us the way. Illumination, that was my light. My chi. What's the definition of I illustrious? Know. I don't know. I don't know. Does somebody know the de definition? And you're all, and I don't know if you, you used it. it right, though. Like you said it when you were supposed to say it. Like it sounded right. I don't know if it applies. I don't know if illustrate, you know. Well known, respected, and admired for past achievements. And future achievements. Oh, I like it how you, I like how you said past. 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 Yeah, this may be, oh. this, this <laughs> podcast may be the downfall of everything you've done. Up until Do you know what's you misused a lot is infamous. They people throw that around. Infamous is famous for a bad reason. Yeah, yeah, but people all the time they'll they'll, they'll talk about an athlete, the infamous, blah 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 blah. It's like a lot of athletes athletes have become infamous, especially in the NFL. Does it have to be bad? Does what? it have to be a bad reason? If you smack your yeah, wife, well, if you're, you're famous. Yeah. yeah, if you're infamous, you're famous for for doing something bad. But why? What? What is that? Actually, I'm going to be the human dictionary on this episode. Okay. Is that really what it means? You're not the dictionary. You're Google. I mean, the last I'm time Googling. I looked it up, <laughs> 30 years ago, I think that that's what it meant. Infamous. That's what it is for a bad reason. And infamous has become more um, a part of the vernacular because oh. of the internet, and people want to. People get just use it like it's it means famous. But but the point is that the kids today, you're talking to talk about how old these you are. These 40-year-olds, these goddamn kids. <laughs> they are the kids. <laughs> they are kids. They are kids. Uh, are, to me, if, if you're my age, yes, they are. Well, I'm a lot older than you, buddy. I got more than a decade on you. I know, you. but the way you accessorize, you know, you just can't really <laughs> guess your age. You know, that's become a thematic. You don't know. I don't know if anything could become thematic when you've when it's only the second time. But you walked in the last time I was looking at our last podcast and you mm -hmm. liked my jacket. And I said, I'll give you it. And I forgot to. So on the way out, if you want one of my accessories, you could take one. No, I'm good. I don't oh, so you're any, just bullshitting. You don't like my accessories. No, I, I, no, I just, I was saying with like the hat, the glasses, the sort of the goatee, like I'm trying. Sort the, of a goatee? Well, yeah, just behind like the mic. I can't. There we go. All right. Okay. A full goatee. It is full. Everything Dare is I say fantastic. Thank Illustrious. You. Wow. <laughs> Infamous goatee. What yeah. did my goatee do I that was bad? I didn't recognize him. When he, when he was standing outside, he was like leaning like that. I thought he was the guy that brings you to Howie. I didn't know Howie was a. I am the guy that I, brings I, you to me. You're a hands-on guy. I am. Well, no hands-on. If you know anything oh, about me, right. there's no hands on. That's why I'm trying to sell you on my, on my hologram technology. I want to be. Do you wish you grew up in the Victorian age where you danced with like the piece of paper, the the handkerchief between your hand and hers? I did not know that. Look at this. This is mm. you know how educational this. We've been on the air for like a three bullshit. minutes. I think it's probably bullshit. They put a handkerchief between when you danced with somebody. How did you get so jaded? I grew up with him. <laughs> yeah, you, get, you hit me with past. Yeah. <laughs> illustrious, what does that mean? And then you go, that's like, wow, just bang, bang, Sorry. bang. She that's actually right. had uh, one play date with Nia. They're the same age. And, you know, oh, uh, for right? those that don't know, his father-in-law was my manager. His father-in-law got me my first cable special. Ben. That's amazing. He did. He's I, a on, legend. On, on, He's a legend. Cin on Cinemax, Ben Hill. Ben Hill you got- keep your clothes on? <laughs> Cinemax was different then. <laughs> It's not like it uh, was classy. It, it was it's pre it was, only fans. It's the original Criterion Channel. Yes, but this the reason I'm saying, and I was probably using it wrong, but illustrious is illustrates what one can do. I find you one of the most fascinating people in the world. I think you're like a movie to me, and I'll tell you why. Because you're like like a star is born. Every little kid, <laughs> nope, but a drunk guy messing up the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> Not that character. <laughs> the girl. He's like Gaga. Yeah. Well, well here's, the, here's the thing. And maybe that's a bad, it's a bad analogy. But as a little kid, you dream that you want to do something. When I grow up, I want to be a pilot. When I grow up, I want to be a, a drummer. When I grow up, I want to be a comedian. When I grow up, I don't know how many things this 
kids said, but you do everything you've ever dreamed of and to the nth power. To be a comedian, I knew you, uh, I think the first time I saw you and worked with you is on Tough Crowd. Did you do Tough? I think we did it. Uh, I, thought we, I think we did a, um, a Just for Last Toronto thing. Okay. I so remember we, you, you, you fucked with me before I went out there. I did? Yeah, in a funny way. Okay. And I, and I was like, because I was nervous. I was like, oh my God, this is Harry Mandel. And then you were like, you, you uh, diffused... All of my nervousness by just breaking my balls, like you made me feel like I was a. Com we were just both comedians. I don't remember that, but I do well, remember it meant a knowing lot to you. me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. You weren't memorable. So, but, <laughs> but here's what I remember. I remember like if people said, "Do you know Bill Burr?" I said, "Yeah, he's a really funny comedian. He's a really funny." But there's a lot of funny funny people and you you hope that everybody achieves their dream well you don't but you you you, for you the most part for the most part i i don't wish negative on anybody i just don't think about a lot of people but i thought you were like this journeyman comedian who is really funny and really witty and then what happened and i think this is like a movie to in my mind is you did this one gig that was going so fucking south that you started just going crazy it's it's a it's a big viral everybody has seen it he, he it started going south and you started just fucking shitting on the audience mm -hmm. wonderfully in a flow in a free form rap flow of comedy that just catapulted you to the next level and made you and and do you th don't you think that that was like a a a a mark in your career that, that just- That was definitely a step, yeah. A but big, I, no, no, I was, dude, it took me like 25 years to make it. <laughs> I had a nice, slow ascent. So, um, I, I, so I, I, you know, let me, if I were to go through all of it, you know, it just, I don't want to go all the way back to the no, beginning, but like, be but, but getting on, getting on the Opie and Anthony show and they used to, they, you know, how they would pay you is they would advertise your gigs. So whatever market they were in, you started selling tickets. So they were huge for me. And then, uh, and then that incident happened. And I thought that that was going to like be the end of my career. Everyone was just going to boo me. That more got me respect from other comics, to be honest with you. But then, then it well, was, what I, here's what do I was a saying. special, do another special, do another special, do another special, do another special. But oh, every time that. you did the specials, every time, so I knew you before that happened. When that happened, you're right, amongst comedians, people were always saying, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. And you you, you became the, the comedian's comic. You gotta see that. But then you got specials, but even when you got specials, and even today on the podcast, people talk about that moment. I think that that moment, if you were gonna write a movie and you write movies, you should write your own life story because it's amazing. Is that, I don't, you have a movie coming out in a few weeks. It is. I am it. not allowed to promote. <laughs> am I? I, I, I? If you're in SAG, you're not allowed to talk about uh, this stuff, you know? They're just waiting for us to lose our apartments and houses. And then they're That's gonna- That's what I read. Then they're, <laughs> then you think they're, somebody actually said that? Oh, that somebody was dumb enough to say that? Oh. You know, it's, I've read those articles. For those that don't know. I think know. someone probably said it and we're losing some of the context and it was spread. You don't think so? I don't know. I, I do think that I they, think that's that, what's going to happen. That they don't, they don't. Uh... Yeah, I do find it weird that uh, how much trouble you can get in for a joke, but you can just have like this unstoppable, insatiable greed um, just the whole, like the whole concept of a corporation that every quarter you have to make more money or else you're a failure. I don't understand like how these CEOs can just give themselves bonuses. It's like, aren't, is that just like legalized stealing from the company? And some other shareholders always seem to have a problem when they're doing something that would be for the common man. But when at the end of the year, when they write out bonuses, for some reason, the shareholders have no problem that they took all of these profits and put a bunch of it in their own pocket so they could go buy another house. Uh, for some reason, that goes under the radar. I saw a thing the other day where there's, there's this wax that they're putting around organic fruit and vegetables to make it last longer. And they actually have a like 70% of it they, is, just, is just on the label as other stuff. And it's like, when did that become legal? You can do that. Like all of that shit. You know, it's a bunch of carcinogens and kids are going to eat them. That's okay. 
But like, if you do the wrong joke, you could you could lose your career. I just feel like um, uh, this is a long way of saying like, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt somebody saying. I don't think I. I this is too much to put on a picket sign. You realize that? <laughs> huh? This is too much to put on a picket yeah, sign. Yeah, I mean that's why I don't write them. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think the point that I was making is what I find fascinating about you is I think you're a brilliant comic and I think you're a really smart guy, but I, I've never seen, I don't know, well, I don't know you that well, but I don't know anybody as well as I know you to have achieved and and so many different dreams as being you know a pilot, you're a helicopter pilot and now you're maybe gonna tow helicopters around, I don't know what you're gonna do, but. Like, like your truck. <laughs> I, said, I want to buy I, I, busted I, ones, tell them to a buddy of mine, he f repairs them and then we flip them and then I, that doesn't cost me as much to fly. He flies helicopters and he wants to be the triple A of the helicopter world. You're going to tow them, fix them up and sell them? And he's going to write off his truck. I told him he has a truck like I have a truck and we love our trucks. Our trucks are great. And I know, you're obsessed with your truck. I am. It's he's just, really it's bad at his... It's the greatest driving. thing ever. But I backed it into I backed it into her car and folded it in half. Oh, I'm starting to see why you're jaded. <laughs> 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 but now I have a tow. I could tow it to the body shop and get it fixed. <laughs> but what I'm trying to get to is that you know these these I'm probably taking out all the fat of these stories. But you, you know, you were 20 years. You have this incredibly what you would probably consider in the moment a devastating career ending possible show which catapults you to the next level cut to you're playing fucking Fenway Park the green monster he is a, a child of Massachusetts that's where he's from talk about a hometown hero closing scene of a of a movie 35,000 people show up to see this kid <laughs> this blue collar kid who you know? I wasn't blue collar. My parents are white collar. They were just bad with money, so we grew, we grew up. <laughs> we grew up in a blue collar neighborhood. Okay, my dad you, you, was a dentist. My mother was a nurse. Didn't know that. You come off very <laughs> yeah. blue collar. You know that. Well, yeah. Well, what we we kind of we. I don't grew, know. I, well, listen, but I was just because you have two smart parents doesn't mean you're going to be smart. So I did horrible in school. So I had all blue collar jobs. Right. And he, was actually, a, he was a forklift driver. That's what, and right. I, but just because you do horrible in school doesn't mean you're not smart. I think some of the smartest people I know don't necessarily do well in school. But sometimes. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you, I'm Terry. Jackie. 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 But sometimes you do bad in school and it is because you're dumb. So, so there's, there's a little bit of truth there. So I, so I did like, you know, I did all of those jobs. I liked those jobs because they had something that I, when I was searching what I wanted to do was what I liked about blue collar jobs was there was a freedom in it. I, as far as like, you didn't, you didn't have to go like to the same fucking office every day. Like if you were landscaping, which was a brutal job, but it was a different house every day, different scenery. You wow, know, those the moments, glass is half full. Yeah. When the, when you were in like the truck or whatever, you know, just that moment when you're driving, you're not at work and you're just bullshitting and you're talking and you're having a good time and you can curse and all of this stuff. There was a freedom to it. I didn't have some boss breathing down my neck because I had a couple of those desk jobs. And I'm like, this, like these fucking guys looking over my shoulder. It's like, I heard what you said. I'm going to do it. Fuck off, you know? So you didn't have a customer looking over your shoulder going, these fucking weeds. You were supposed to pull these weeds. No? no I had a couple bad ones like that. I'm the, when I was doing window washing, I remember that. I just remember this woman, like she had like, we had, we were just washing the windows. She had paint on her fucking window. We didn't say we we're going to get the paint off, right? She just kept sending us up the ladder. And every time we would start to be like, lady, we got paper towels. And like, cause my buddy's business, we were like, you know, 1920, we had paper towels and like squeegee bottles. Right. And every time we would try to debate with it, she just go, huh? <laughs> I still remember it. And I was like, I am going to fucking grab you by your old fucking neck. And I, you know. You're not supposed to kill customers. Anyway, the point oh, is right. that you were that kid in Massachusetts who was trying to get the fucking paint off the window, who's trying to get the weeds off the lawn, and now you're at Fenway Park, the green monster. The, 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 I, I, you're a baseball fan. Are you not a baseball fan? Yes. Yes. So I would imagine as a kid, you went to ball games there, and like this is like uh, America's pastime. Just a kid from Boston in this... I think it's a, like yeah, the no, Coliseum it, it, of America, you know, in the Coliseum. And now you know you're funny about that gig is the whole week you know, the, you know, leading up to it. I was back east and I was walking around Boston and I, which I love doing. 
I, I just, whenever I go back there, I just walk around. I just, all these, you know, places, all these great memories and, you know, stuff that's changed. And I just, you know, I'd run into people, but hey man, good luck, good luck. So I kind of felt like, you know, people were behind me, which I really needed psychologically. I went out. Like you were oh, the Red Sox. <laughs> I went out with like Tony V and we just had the best time. Magical night, smoking cigars up in right field as people were walking out waving. We couldn't believe that it happened. And my agent booked me in Toronto the very next day. Like I didn't even get the chance to take it in. Like literally like not even 12 hours later, it's just like, please remove all your, your laptops out of your bags and no liquids, no liquids, no laptops. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just on to Toronto. So I actually talked to him about that uh, recently. We had a good laugh about that. And he's just That's like, he's like, I just want to like, you know, Max, Keep it going. Maximize your time out there. I go, oh, are you doing that? Or are we paying for your beach house? What's going on here? <laughs> but I, I love my agent. I'm just, I, 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 so. Well, your agent, if you go to. Uh, um, if I really felt that shit, I, I wouldn't be with him, but I, I love him. But, but, was, but who's your agent? Wanna I, I want to say his name. Don't say his name gonna, because people yeah. will book you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to, I think it's billbird.com. Is that your website yes. for your tickets? I, I like that you can follow your tour. And your tour is consistently, you know, arenas now. You're an arena act. You're uh, an international. And there's a separate, you have a separate. Um, I have an outfit change. I change outfits in the middle of it. You're like Cher. Dif yeah, different. different. Well, each joke, you know, each song is a different outfit. Each joke's a different outfit, different sparkly scarf. Yeah. A what sparkly not? scarf. A sparkly scarf. That is the uh, Bill Burr and sparkly scarf in one sentence, in one thing. Have you ever I worn it? it? You I do? Can see it. Yeah. Yeah. You look no. like a sparkly scarf. I, I would do it. Guy. You would wear a sparkly scarf. Yeah. I, there's there's a big part of me people don't under, they, that. They don't I, get you. Yeah. That I'm, I am really silly. People think I'm just this angry lunatic, but like, yeah, I, I wouldn't. That's why I love acting is you just get to be all of that stuff you get to do is just um, get you one step closer to that sparkly sparkly scarf. scarf. Yeah. Why not and oh, then I, wear it and just watch you guys sit there uncomfortably and not change my demeanor, but I yet have that. it on. Just I have love it on. that. Yeah, I love that. I did. I got thrown off a show. Um, I got thrown off of a, a show. I think it was for Apple or, or I don't know what it was. It was a digital show. And I thought it was funny. They were they every time they broke, they had this uh, really manic um, makeup person right. that would come and powder, just powder. They're just wait, wait, ready to go? We're rolling? No, 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 no! And she would run in and powder. So I um, took a they had a like a spray bottle in the back, and I sprayed myself, just. <laughs> fucking dripping and soaked the front of my shirt and i sat down to do the interview and they went hold he's sweating i go no i don't i don't i don't i don't like to be tough and i was doing the art the whole interview i have a picture of myself <laughs> which maybe you could put up but i'm just soaked and the uh interviewer couldn't concentrate people it's just <laughs> but i love and they what, never said anything that's fantastic. I feel like that's your favorite sense of humor. My You've favorite sense on, of humor is he's not. He's gone the laugh. on like talk shows with wigs, but like won't tells everyone like do not even talk about it. I did it. a I Jimmy Kimmel once with a wig, and I told the through my publicist that Jimmy can't mention it, the segment producer can't mention it, nobody, so that they would think that I'm all of a sudden I'm wearing a hairpiece and I just don't want it mentioned <laughs> and I want it, and it just went by. It just you could find me on Jimmy Kimmel with wearing a hairpiece. For me, it's I can't just, commit to I I get to the point the tension's too much and I have to like let people in on the joke. Really? Why? Next talk show, uh, you got to have a sparkly scarf. And not okay. say you don't ever just do jokes for you. Like you're the only one in on the joke. Yeah, but then I let people in to let them so know. So then like, you're not the only one on the in on the joke. I that's the problem not, my yeah. wife has with me because she'll go like, that, "Who who's the joke for?" And I always say, "For me." And you know that no, adage. No, sometimes I will say something to my wife, joking, and then six months later she'll be like, "You know, you said that that really hurt my feelings." I go, "Oh, that was a joke." And she goes, "You didn't tell me that because I have like a real <laughs> matter of fact <laughs> delivery." Sometimes you do. you do. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like. Uh, I'm joking like, and sometimes I'm making the joke because I'm actually thinking of something else. So I just say something ridiculous. Um, I don't know. I love, for me, I was saying there's an adage, if you can make one person laugh, you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, honestly, it is just me. If I can make myself laugh, I'm happy. If nobody in the room <laughs> is laughing, if it's quiet. Do you know what some woman said to me? No. I was at this thing, uh, this event, Right, and I was sitting there, and a couple people, and there was this beautiful woman, 
they, they were like these little, it was a Hollywood bowl, these little box things, this beautiful woman. And uh, like two or three people had come up to me and got like a picture. So she looked at me and she goes, she had this weird accent. She was just like, you know, why do, you, why do, uh, why do people want to get a picture with you? Like, who are you or whatever? And I forget what I said. I made a joke and I, about myself and I laughed. And she goes, you amuse yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of my favorite things yes. this year that anybody said. I died laughing. I was just like, I do. I do amuse myself. I say shit and I make myself laugh. But like she didn't, whatever joke I made about myself, she didn't laugh at all. And she Which just- Which makes it better. It was, it was fantastic. It should have been like in a movie. Like I felt like it was in like a spy movie, you know, where there's always the character that doesn't know he, he's, he's hanging out with spies. Cause she had, like, she was beautiful and had the accent. She had like, like this spy vibe and she just goes, you amuse yourself. <laughs> I love that. So that's what I do. But I'm, I'm th th this, your- achievements do you sit back ever and go listen i'm flying fucking helicopters i'm not i'm not only gonna fly them but i'm gonna pick them up rebuild them <laughs> sell it hasn't them. happened yet like like this it's a weird time but right you now. fly helicopters <laughs> yes it what hasn't happened i haven't been able to find one no to, not to, that to, that's to not my point to find okay. one my point is that you're <laughs> in upset. a helicopter you you fly helicopters you're playing fenway park in and in, in front of 35,000 people you have the ability to drum you're meeting your your heroes you can make a grilled cheese sandwich <laughs> you're I, doing it all you're doing, you're doing it, it all, all but you you're are. illustrious people you, you have to realize because i'm so uh, immersed in mental health as my that that people look for every reason to be unhappy and they look for every reason to uh, explain what they haven't achieved and why and if they just get this, they think they'll be happy. I feel like you check every fucking box you ever want to check and and we don't see people doing that. You don't, you don't never stand back and go, I got a fucking helicopter. I'm playing baseball arenas. I'm world renowned. There's one beautiful girl at the Hollywood Bowl that has no fucking idea who I am, but that's, Basically. No, I'm actually a cool. A lot of people don't know who I am. It's cool. I can walk down the street and I can still do all of this stuff. No, I don't. I, uh, I don't. I don't. I'm I, directing movies that I'm not allowed to talk about. No, I don't think about that stuff. I just think no. about. I think about doing the uh, doing the job. I, I enjoy it and all of that type of stuff. But I, I don't stand back and breathe my accomplishments in. I think that that would be the end of like. And then I did the, like. But you just, that's, but the, I, I, that's one of my, that is one of my favorite things though, is when like people do like those, uh, those photos of themselves, they'll be like on, like they'll be at a, uh, an airport in front of a private jet with all this high end luggage and all their cars. And the thing is you can't ever look at the camera on that photo. You always have to be, you know, you always got <laughs> like, just looking onto that next thing, man. And blah, 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 blah. Um, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I had. You know, the dreams I had when I started are not the dreams I have now. So that's another thing. Like, things change. This shit that you think you want, and then you realize, like, oh, is that what the sacrifice is? I don't want that. Or I thought I wanted that. Now I'm doing it. I'm not into this shit. I'll do something else. So, um, But that's part of the journey. Right. But, but you talked about I'll tell that. you right now, the greatest thing, I don't know, everything you just said there, none of that compares to swimming in the pool with my kids. My kids are six and three. That is the greatest. That's, it's uh, uh. All the fun things I've done as a dad... Because my little one, like, so looks up to his sister that every time he comes up from under the water, he's, like, smiling to see where she... He, and it's just, like, pu the pure joy of, like, a three-year-old. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. I, I don't want to do stand-up anymore. I just want to... I mean, I'd run out of money, but I just want to stay home <laughs> and hang out with these kids. So that's well, what that's I... beautiful. That, I, so that's is everything you're saying. I find is, is the bigger this stuff got, the smaller I wanted my life to be. So I have a little back porch that I essentially live on. I read books out there. If it wasn't for the fucking weed whackers, it'd be a goddamn paradise. But I just, every time I go to sit down out there, the second I open a book, I'm like, <laughs> I can think it's going. Somebody's got somebody working on it. Well, there's a, a new routine. Did, did your routines, does your comedy come out of uh, frustration and anger? Is that the, is that the seed of a I, routine? I think a lot of my earlier stuff up until about six months ago. No, a lot of my earlier stuff did. And I think now it's... Uh, I don't know. It's a lot. I, I think it's a lot sillier. I don't know. People always, you know. Uh, but on your last special, which is 
um, Red, Red Rocks, Rocks right? Uh -huh. well, uh, the, the brilliance of you um, kind of uh, tackling the inane, the inanity, inanity. Will you Google it? I don't know. What that I don't is. know what I'm trying the, to say. The infamous. <laughs> well, it's just a name. Well, just um, uh, you were talking about um, abortion, you know, and the fact that you were able to straddle both sides with, I thought, the most brilliant take on it yet. You know, of whether it's alive that the baking right. routine. I'm not. Oh yeah, yeah, no, those, yeah. Those are fucking brilliant. But it's like. I always think that it's it's an an incredible. You knew where that came from? Where? Well, I would say from some of my therapy and in, in, uh, mushroom trips that I've done. <laughs> I would say that that has to do with uh, not getting affection growing up, so not wanting to receive it. So uh, you you sort of piss off both sides, so you can stay in your comfort zone. All right, everybody's kind of like, yeah, I don't fucking like this guy. Fuck this guy. He's 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 pro. What I'm not pro. Or whatever. I kind of do. Maybe that's you straddle both sides. You really straddle both sides. And yeah, because you know why? I don't have any answers, and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. And I'm so goddamn sick of 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 you know. One of the the number one ways you know that you're a fucking idiot is that you think you know shit. That is just the number one thing. Like the the confidence that mouth breathing fucking morons have. <laughs> the fucking confidence. Is 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 astounding. It's fuck. It, it it's limitless, limitless. They'll fucking they'll criticize NASA. You know, <laughs> is it also summer just school kids. A safe way to write a joke because you know you're by pissing off both. You're not necessarily taking a single stance. No, that's what people on either side are. You fucking centrist. You know, like the stupid <laughs> schoolyard. I and mean, it's just like it's actually the opposite because now you kind of pissed off both but sides, so nobody likes you. Which is my is my favorite thing is to do that, but then get them back. Cause there was a thing when I was coming up, there was this whole, you know, this badge of honor of commerce. He walked the room, man. There was 300 people in there, but the time you get up there, you fucking tree. It's just like this. Once they leave, meaning the, he, they stood up and left. They left <laughs> cause they were so outraged or whatever. But it's like, but once they leave, the fun's over. The fun is the way he does it. The what way you, you got this thing, the way you do it is you fucking, you, 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 you poke. Anno yeah. And you annoy and you annoy and you fuck with people and they, they feel like they should leave. But then you also have this, well, I don't want to miss something. Like, so it's this, right. this push pull thing. If you just like straight up piss them off, you know, and they just stand up and fucking walk out once they're out the door, then you're left with everybody that agrees with you. Like, where's well, the Well, we fun all piss then? them off, but you want to piss them off with finesse. <laughs> you just want to, you can't just piss somebody <laughs> off you want to entertain them but they're going to walk out angry but that was good but well, i, I trash biden right i trash biden and then all the trump people go nuts right and then i always go i'm not saying this in a pro-trump way and then i make fun of donald trump right my favorite thing to do is make fun of you know how he says he's a good businessman you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> every casino i've ever performed in he's going bankrupt he's literally in a casino town and he can't keep it profitable so i i just do that <laughs> i do that and uh and I come out of it and I kind of like, you know, I am, I am not trying to do that. I'm not trying to be like divisive. I'm trying to get, you know, hopefully. Maybe bring it, us together by seeing the flaws on both sides. Well, more have, a, have an hour <clears throat> where everybody's just sort of like, like just realizing everything is just kind of ridiculous. Like the whole thing's ridiculous. Nobody's really 100% right. Nobody's 100% wrong. It's all sort of fucking silly <clears throat> and it's stupid and it's, it's designed to fail. That's Our world? Where, yes. Wow, that turned dark. <laughs> we're, we're designed to fail? Yes, and I blame God. And not a lot of people don't. <laughs> Do you believe in God? Are you, huh? are you religious? Uh, I was, and then I wasn't, and now I am again. What happened? Uh, I got past organized religion. And uh, I was like, this, was, this is always them trying to explain what they didn't understand. So they don't understand it doesn't just because they don't understand it or they use it in the wrong way doesn't mean that it's not there. So I'm trying to have my own like uh, cult. <laughs> <laughs> like is that I really just, a scratch on your forehead from a child, or is that a mark? No, that yeah, it was a yeah, it was a ritual. Um, no, I'm just I'm kind of just having my own. I'm just kind of having my own thing. All right, you know, I like whatever my idea of it. 
isn't any any better than your idea isn't any more right or wrong and like um what's your idea i want to hear your idea my idea i just yeah. think that it's it's like uh the earth is more like his like just like sort of an artist right and then he just designed these things to fuck with each other for like his own entertainment you know what i mean like you think he, god like, is a comedian no, it doesn't always, it's not always funny. I don't, the think, jokes that aren't he, always I don't think he, I don't think he cares. That's my thing. I don't think that he cares what happens to you. If he cares, he wouldn't make serial killers, which he does. He does make serial killers. And I'm sick of him pawning that off on the devil because he also created the devil. That is also his creation. So shouldn't he just handle that? Like, why doesn't he just handle that shit? Why do we have to deal with it? Why is there this big fucking test? Well, well doesn't, it, doesn't test, make, it doesn't make any fucking sense. The whole thing is fucking stupid. The whole thing is fucking... If you just look at animals, what do animals do? Nothing. And then you look how some are just out there with teeth like mine running next to these monsters and they get ripped apart and eaten alive. And he made that too. So like he's, he's not, you know, I don't think he's like the most, you know, chill dude. Right. You've become so spiritual <laughs> since the last time we, we talked. <laughs> I don't I think I was expecting that take. But it's a beautiful take. You should open up the Church of Burr. <laughs> the, Church but the Church of Burr. Yeah, I don't understand why he drops you in this cesspool and then shit happens to you and then the end of your life he's yelling at you like, what the fuck was that? I mean, what the fuck was that? It was what you made. Oh, so it was what? what the fuck you made and I ran into all of those fucking assholes. I don't want to be like this. You think I want to be a fucking angry lunatic? Well, I think, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Maybe if you tried a little harder with some of the people in my life when you made them. You lazy cunt. Instead of fucking working six days and putting your feet up and that's it and letting the thing just go where it's going to go. And then it's my responsibility. This little fucking speck on this fucking planet. Oh, fuck yourself. Wow, I'm not really saying it to him. I'm saying it to like all organized religions. I don't want to. I don't want to. So you believe in a fucking cunt. I believe that God is everything. I believe, I'm with and you. And he's also a cunt. <laughs> Can we put that in the uh, in the liner in the thumbnail? I don't know. We found God. He's a cunt. <laughs> but no, but a I definitely I do believe that the only power that you do have is to try to be nice to people. That's really at the end of it. That's all you have. Even the wow, most that is a great ending to that rant. <laughs> yeah, God's well, a I cunt, mean, so be nice. I don't have to go down to his level. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the ego comes in. I put myself above God and then I start my cult. But I think we're pretty similar in our beliefs. I'm not, uh, I've kind of moved away from organized religion. And because organized religion is disorganized, it's just this group of people. It's people. As soon as you get in organized religion, it's not about God. It's not about a power greater than us. It's about this building that they've built and the rules that they put in place so that you follow these buildings. And every building has different rules. But what we can all agree on is there is a power greater than what we can see and feel right now. I mean, and you just said it, you know, looking in, sitting on your back porch, looking at those beautiful creations in the pool. Th these are, th yeah. these were created on, from something bigger than we can even, 100%, 100%. we can even articulate. So I think the key to life in my in my opinion is to be nice, which is putting it very simply. Which but is to, considered weak. That's how fucked up we are. Really? Was Mother Teresa weak? I heard she was a cunt. <laughs> no. <God>. Um, <laughs> I saw, saw a funny t-shirt the other day that sounded like, remember the $10,000 pyramid where they, sure. would, where they would be giving out clues? Yeah. It said God's guns and guts. And it just felt like $10,000 pyramid, you know, with the clock ticking down? Yeah, yeah. God's guns, guts. And it's like uh, the three things that ruin a peaceful society. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And now there's going to be a bunch of gun nuts going like, oh, you remember World War II? I do. How did it start? There you go. Yeah. There you go. But, but what I'm saying is we need to be there for other human beings and we need to be nice and we need to be fearful and respectful of a power greater than we can describe and, and know that it's bigger than us. I don't need that motivation. That's what always bugged me. But you, you, you're saying, but you are, and he's fucking mad at you. I'm not saying it's a guy. Huh? Well, as a Jew, oh, it's I'm not 100% a woman. 
It's, it's a hundred percent a woman a because cut. God takes no responsibility for his actions. <laughs> One hundred percent female oh behavior. I'll read the comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I <laughs> You know, I read an article with the Hollywood reporter that you just wanna be liked. Don't you get worried that these jokes or anything you're not gonna these be are liked. Jokes. These are jokes, these are his thoughts. When the fuck did I say that? You said that you want approval. You did? Yeah. It doesn't sound like you. You said that you're that always looking true? for approval. Can There's a something? misconception can I, can about I, can I, can you. I actually, yeah. Well, oh, I'd have to read what they said. But okay. they talk to you for like an hour and then they slam it into this and they just, you know, just it's it's never really what you said. So okay. I don't know. But the I truth, even it. without that article, yeah. even without that article, to get up and to talk publicly or to show up in a in a podcast, it's because we do. We being people who have made this choice in life to No, mine was beyond that. After doing mushrooms, I realized the reason why when <laughs> I became a comedian is it was the easiest way to go into a room full of strangers and get them to like me so no one would hurt me. So that is that's, so that's, that's, that's the answer. That's I think being that, liked. I think that becomes more, that's more of like, end the abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Were you bullied? Uh, um, I was both. I, I, I bullied some kids and I was bullied. Like I, I, you know, had some fights or whatever, but like when I, I hit puberty late. So in junior high, I went from one of the tougher kids to not, you know, all of a sudden being like six inches shorter than any everybody else. And, uh, you know, that sort of sits with you too. I think you then you just sort of see yourself as that for kind of the rest of your life. Like a lot of, there's a lot of like truths, you know, in, in your childhood that just sort of just latch on whether they are or not. Like I remember one time I, I worked with this comedian and uh, just a fucking Adonis, six foot six, but he just had this, this like childlike thing about him. And, and when he would get mad, it reminded me of Dirty Dozen. Remember Posey, the giant fucking guy? Oh, it's, no. It's a movie from 60 years ago. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I remember so. remember the movie, but I don't remember Posey. He got so mad, this Parker guy was Posey. pushing him. He turned around, and he punched him in the jaw, and the guy's jaw went through his brain because he didn't, and, he, and now he was on death row. That was basic. So he had like this vibe about the guy. And I finally talked to him, you know, as a tour, and it turned out he hit his growth spurt late and he was bullied. And I was trying to wrap my head around it because he was like a former football player, six foot six, fucking gigantic, right? And then we were like later on in the tour and I saw him writing and this six foot six guy was in the corner of this couch curled up in like Indian style, you know? And I literally saw that little kid, you know, he's writing the jokes. I'm like, that's how he sees himself. <laughs> But it was, it was kind of unsettling because I was like, he doesn't understand. It's like, you know, like a Great Dane thinks it's like a Yorkshire Terrier. Right. He comes bounding into the room and jumps on you and doesn't realize it's like a, like a little horse. But I, I think that we are all stuck in whatever youthful moment it was the most uh, distinctly stamped into our psyche. That's we're all kids. You know, I used to think that, uh, you know, I used to sit around in the class and think one day we're going to grow up and we're just gonna know everything and we're gonna know and, and, and you know, adults <laughs> know how to, how to fix it, they know how to do it. And then you realize you grow up and whether you're a doctor or a pilot, uh, whatever, it's that same asshole that was just picking his nose sitting next to you yeah. is your pilot, is your doctor, is the idiot. It doesn't matter what they've done or is that child that you see in the corner writing. We right. really don't. No, and I was in like my teens when I'd see it, like a guy 25 years old with the mustache, I would just be like, that's a man. That guy like knows everything. Like it's. And then you find out it's a, it's a woman from Europe. It's a woman who transitioned to a mustachioed man. <laughs> well, <I'd, laughs> there we go. So we're doing, we're talking about transit. <laughs> is that a transition or is that a, just a. I, I don't know. I know we can't talk about that. Do you, do you think about things? Do you, are you a, a big editor? in your in your own mind because you know i have to massive add so i hide behind the hey man it's just how it comes out is how it comes out but it's really is i i just have to keep marching forward and if i have to stop that's why I like uh the editing process of of a movie like you know there's like i can only sit there for so long and i have to do walk laps around the building and then come back in like seven minutes later like at some point i have to have some sort of forward movement i i, I just like 
it drives me nuts. So I, I know you're I not allowed to talk about it. I'm not going to make you talk about it, but I'm, I can't wait to see your movie. My it's coming out. Scarf. What? My sparkly scarf. Well, I'll see you on talk shows in your spot. Well, if there are talk shows at the time, I don't know how long this, this is, is going to last, but uh, he wrote and directed a movie that's coming out that he can't speak of. How does how do those rules work though? Aren't you allowed to talk about it if you're not getting paid to promote it and you're just I don't your think well, I, I, I you know you I, I don't it? think I'm even allowed to talk about it. I'm in the yeah, union no, too. Seg said you, you can't promote anything on podcasts or anything like that. Um, oh. You know, well, why would you? No, I'm just saying. I mean, if they're not going to pay us, but I mean, even if it's not a promotion, but you just saying that you can't wait to see it, is that considered a promotion? Probably. You just got me in trouble. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry, I don't know. You know, but 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 Isn't it, it is kind of murky waters a little bit. I don't think See it's that? murky. The point is this that is you don't why want women have such a problem on their diets. <laughs> <laughs> They're always looking for a gray area. Yeah, <laughs> it's like no, eat this, do this, it'll work. I don't know. It's, it's just not, feeling it's, like having an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not murky. Split it with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, no, it's not murky. We're not allowed to promote it, but I'm fascinated by, and you don't want to put money in the pockets of people who have uh, made it a business of not treating everybody incredibly fairly. Right. I get it. Does I that agree. make sense? I just didn't know the rules. Well, the murkiness <laughs> is in my own head and maybe his head because. No, no, I, I, I read the thing and I was like, all right, because I, I was showing a movie trailer before my shows. So we had to get rid of that. I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, the comedian I was working with, she's like, I don't feel comfortable promoting this. I'm like, oh, my God, you're right. I can't do this. So we wait. You're not even showing the trailer before your live shows. No. Wow. That's I, I believe in unions, man. They, what people don't remember no. is people died, like the the to create all of these unions. Like if you read some of the shit like that happened in the 1800s during the Industrial Revolution, they had fucking kids working in factories and and like the the level of abuse. So then they had to like they they started you know striking, and then they had strike breakers come down there with bats and guns and killed these people, and they didn't get prosecuted because they were on the side of the uh, the rich people and the politicians didn't do shit about it. And then we finally got unions, and I feel like that created the middle class. I might be wrong. And in my lifetime, corporations were like, all right, well, we're just going to move production outside of the country. Have, have fun with your union. And uh, I'm not saying unions were totally in innocent, too, because, you know, they got power and they abused it or whatever. It's just human. It's just it's like hu organized religion. Again. It's human behavior. It's human behavior. You get a little power, even if you're a victim, then, then you start becoming the abuser because of him. Cause that's how he made us or her, <laughs> the cunt or they, the cunt. We'll just call it the cunt. The big C, the big C in the, the sky. In the Do sky. you believe in the big C in the sky? <laughs> big C in the sky. Jeremy, how are we going to handle this when we edit this together? Does this get bleep? Does this get... I don't think so. Oh, you guys not curse on this? Let it go. Pardon me? You guys don't curse on well, this? Well, I'd love to. I'd love to curse on this, but I don't know what happens. Do they... Uh, cunt is okay? I'm just worried about the religious people. I'm not really worried about the religious people. Um, They'll be mad at something else in three days. So hopefully um, this strike will be over before... The, are they holding your release date? Can you say that? I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, don't, I have no idea. Oh, there's murky waters? It's no, not, no, 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 he's being, water. that's not murky. I'm just asking, because I'm such a fan and I can't, I can't wait. What do you like doing? I mean, these are such <laughs> different. <laughs> Let's get out of this shit that we can't talk about. What do you like doing? No, but, but uh, because the, the, they seem to be such different um, um, skill, uh, different skill set. I mean, to be a director or a writer versus, you know, standing there in front of a crowd spewing your art. Do you like stand, I would stand up? Per the performing is the easiest. I f at least it is for me. The easiest or but the most enjoyable? Easiest. Oh, so what is the most enjoyable? Um, I like writing as much as I like performing. <laughs> Even though writing is a little more tedious. So I, it's the rewriting that, you know, that I, I, I don't enjoy when it's not working but like and i actually enjoy writing stuff for other people and i like writing like you know when i wrote this thing that i'm not allowed to talk about okay uh or i will just say in general when i sit down to write something i want every actor to be excited 
about this scene, about what they have. I don't want to have anybody just with, with, you know, blow off lines. I want to have everybody, there's, there's something interesting about each person. So it gives the performer a platform to add to it and do like their thing about it. So then they're going to come down to set and they're not going to be like, oh, I wish I had a bigger part or I, I hate my character. You ever work with the actor that's doing that? That's fun to be across. Fuck my, I fucking hate my character. Are you, are you good with this. taking notes? Dude, you can give me a line read. I don't give a fuck. I'll do it. What do I have to say to get out of here? That's that's how I look when I'm on set. <laughs> what, really? what, what, what do I have to do so you feel that you have this so we can turn the camera around? Really? Oh, my God. So you have no attachment to what you've sat there, as you said, incredibly tediously, you know, and, and, and put this together in what you believe is the... Only if it's not working. But if, if they're doing it and they, all right, that's how they want to do it. Um, yeah, what, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't do that thing. Like I heard the joke in my head this way. I thought you were talking about me as a performer, like taking notes. I, I don't, I'm no, I'm talking about your script and your, or, you know, a project and you do other things, which you can't talk note. about. If I, if I think it's a stupid note, studio notes, if their, uh, studio gets, uh, you know, people always act like every note they give you stinks. It's not true. Studios are just like comedians. There's good ones, there's bad ones or whatever, right? As, as far as like executives. Some people give good notes. Some people give bad notes. Some people just give notes because the meeting's going to end and they didn't say anything. Right. So now they feel they have to say something. Then you just sit there going like, oh my God, you're just talking to talk. And now I have to sit here and act like this is an actual fucking note so you can get credit for having your fucking desk, right? That one I, I don't enjoy. But like um, I got, you know, I had somebody younger read something that I wrote one time and said, this is a great movie for a 50 year old. And I, I immediately got upset. Uh, and I was just like, no, he's right. He's right. I need to have, you know, the younger people giving it back as good as they're getting it. And then, and it, and it ended up being a great note that my ego couldn't handle in the beginning. But when I thought about it afterwards, then it became, it balanced the script and then it made it a fun ride for everyone. Hopefully. Well, well see. that's great. So you're, you're not ego driven as much as, I'm Some, I'm going home driven. <laughs> <laughs> let's oh, let's not ego. This. He go home. Yeah, Hogo, yeah. <laughs> let's just just fucking let's just work on like what what do you want? And I'll just I'll do my version of it. And if if you just keep pushing and pushing, I just I don't give a fuck. What do you want me to do? I'll just do it. But I I haven't had a lot of those situations. But I but whenever but I do a, work, I I I do kind of make sure I kind of. Uh, you know, early on, I, I let the director know that I have no fucking problem. But you were the director. Whatsoever. No, I'm saying on like acting yeah. gigs. Oh, on stuff. acting gigs. I get that. I, and it, that's you going home. But what I'm saying is that, you know, as a comedian, you know, when in the moments that you're inspired, you can come up with ideas and then you have that 90 minutes at night to kind of spew that, but mm -hmm. you have the whole day to just do whatever you want to do. You just said you enjoy walking around Boston and looking at buildings that you remember, and you can do that. <laughs> when you are a the writer, producer, and director of a film, uh -huh. there is nothing more consuming your whole life. You, are, you have to make decisions. The hair department will walk up to you and go, do you like the way mm -hmm. I comb this, the way? It's the, it's the opposite of a comic's life. It is like the most immersed, yeah. consuming it um, was a lot but i had a lot of help you know i remember watching uh early on something i learned i remember jerry seinfeld went up and he was talking about was making fun of his acting you know he's early on was saying he was he said i you know i'm not that good at it, but i was smart enough to surround myself with actors that are so good but blah 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 blah, blah. and i remember that going like that's like a really that's a really smart thing that he did that that takes you got to be humble to be able to do that and and to see that about yourself and then allow people to help you so that's what i did i just made sure i had you know when i was in that situation that everyone around me like i didn't write not allowed to talk about this thing but like i didn't whatever we are talking about i was am not, I, I hope i'm not pushing you in a direction yeah, yeah, you're yeah, uncomfortable yeah, yeah. with but am i mean I? I i had a lot of help i had a lot of help i'm so. just talking about in general the, just the the idea i'm not talking about that thing and I don't want to push it and I'm I'm for the union too so I don't want I don't want to push that but I'm just talking about in your life you have decided to do different things you've decided to spend moments being a pilot spend moments writing a movie and directing a movie mm -hmm. it's not the first time I is this the first time you've directed 
Uh, yes. Okay. But even producing, so you produce, this is a different discipline than being a comedian. This is a different discipline than uh, pursuing a fun. hobby. It ended up being fun. And it was something I, I never had any desire to do, but it was because of the pandemic that all of these projects got put on hold. So no directors were available. So then it started coming around, you know, on this certain project. I'm probably gonna get in trouble here, but that, that's what ended up happening. So we could was, talk about why default. you didn't feel there was a part for me. <laughs> um, I didn't feel you were gonna show up. I, would. I thought you were gonna show that. Send, 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 send the hologram <laughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be an interesting com uh, uh, character trait? Do you know what I thought? Because he was, I was supposed to do the podcast in, in Montreal. And then when I found out he wasn't going to be there and I was going to be talking to him as a hologram, I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. So and he called me the night before. Yeah, like, I'm not fucking doing that, right? So, but I thought you were going to be, I thought you were going to be like all like, like pixelated, like a Star Trek episode. I didn't realize you were going to look that real. You just showed me the Ellen DeGeneres one when she was in yeah. the store. That was amazing. Thank you. It is something. And it's also, it gives somebody the ability to be in more than one place at a, at one time and maybe when you're allowed to talk about it that's a great script okay that's a great script i'll write right it there. with you. you you commit a fucking murder <gasps> and you're like what are you doing man i was at the funny bone in fucking topeka <laughs> <laughs> fuck the first hologram murderer wow that's a holly good idea that's a good idea we'll talk about that after the uh somebody's gonna use it as an alibi and try to play it <laughs> off that that was actually them and that Applebee's and not a hologram. Well, the second you can disguise the big white box and actually put some uh, Cracker Barrel shit around it. I can. Oh, you can? Yeah, I'll show you after. You can disguise the white box. You can build it into things. It's windows in, in the H&M stores in Brooklyn. It's right now, it is. So it looks like people are in the window, but So how not. couldn't you like hologram yourself to fucking Niagara Falls acting like you're taking a selfie like you're there and then, you know, you kill your business partner in L.A. And you're like, I wasn't there. I, here's my selfie. I was in Niagara so Falls. So I use it for meet you and can. greets. Uh, you can. And people take selfies with me. And if you look at their selfies, you would think I am standing behind them. And I'm talking to them. And it's live. And I don't have my plane ticket. But the guy that took the selfie with me has a plane ticket. And he could show you where he was that moment where he took the selfie. And it doesn't look like I was a hologram. Problem solved. And they're all right with that. Taking a selfie with me? The meet and greets, yeah. you mean? Oh, the meet and greets. Yes. All right, I've got to shut my phone off. It's fucking buzzing here. Sorry. But maybe it's something important. Do the meet and greets know that you're a hologram when they sign up for it? People enjoy the, the idea that with the hologram that you're actually, re I'm really interacting. Wouldn't you enjoy? Uh, I feel like you'd be more he enjoyable. He Bill Clinton there. He completely didn't answer that question. What? No, but I do believe he would be more <laughs> enjoyable as a hologram. <laughs> said my daughter yeah. who, who i raised no because i know he's so <laughs> uncomfortable in person with strangers i remember him germs. doing the bit when you were born if you if you're his first yes I am you, you're yeah. yeah i remember what that bit? what bit i remember on his special he goes think about that he goes i am somebody's dad you remember that that's that's exactly what i said i am no that's i was a, i'm a huge fan i'm a huge fan you don't well, understand you don't know what that means I, to me because you don't understand how but then, much i love I you oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Get it. <laughs> but I am. You know what? You're probably the most real, not show busy. Everything you've sa you're saying today is kind of, I don't really articulate, is my philosophy. Like, I think the smartest people in the room are the people who know what they don't know, you know, and people who know what they, who think they well, know. Well, that's how I got to a lot of things that I got, was I always knew what I sucked at, so I didn't have to waste time. Like when I played drums, as much as I love playing drums, when I would go to a music store, I always tell this story. I would go in and I would see some kid half my age sit down at the drums or pick up a guitar and you could see he, he was expressing himself already. He had it. And I was like, like I was trying to figure out what he was doing. I, was just, I just knew. I was just like, you, you enjoy drums. You're a fan of music, but you are not a musician. This is not your calling. So I just kept moving around i'm like all do, right suck at that fuck that do you really think so you, you suck at that or you didn't put your time into it like you didn't have as much like you uh, you're a fan of drums i mean i think that i could have gotten to like you know be in a wedding band maybe a cover band i mean if i played enough i have enough of an ability that i, I could sound all right but like i gotta be honest with you one of my favorite things ever 
is when you just hear a professional drummer just sit down on a kit just to hear what they sound like, there's, there is a different sound when a professional drummer sits down. Who's your favorite down. drummer in the world? Oh, God. that's I can't even answer that. There's just there's so many. There's just so many. Um, and there's just so many different types of music that, um, oh, God. You're a metal band fan, though. I know, but I, I like uh, like, you know... I, I loved I, mean, I, I saw Dave Grohl live when he was with um, uh, them Crooked Vultures, John Theodore. I saw him with Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, Steve Jordan, he was the Letterman drummer and played in Keith Richards' band. Now he's in the Stones. Was a huge one for me. Uh, Vinnie Paul, Alex Van Halen, Phil Rudd, Elvin Jones. Uh, uh, Tony, so you're, Tony you're, Williams. You're just going to name everyone. Yeah. You're just going <laughs> to. No, because gonna... they all have like, and then what's fun is trying to see how they all fit in the puzzle of like, oh, you know, trying to guess who, you know, listened to who or whatever. So um, it's kind of drumming. I would imagine, I don't know a lot about music and, and drumming, but I would imagine it's like comedy. You know, you could mention all the different comedians, but no two comedians are alike. They have that rhythm. They have their sense of humor. They have their uniqueness. Yeah. And the way you're describing that, there's just a lot. And then of there's then there's the mainstream accessible ones, and then there's the comics comic ones, and then there's the guys who are like, you know, there's there's just so many. It's just like 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 with music, like every uh, anybody who doesn't play drums, you knows Keith Moon, knows John Bonham, knows like those those main guys. But then you get people into music, and then drummers, drummers, and it's sort of like this whole uh, like pyramid of stuff, and all of them are uh, necessary. You know what I mean? Like, have you got I, to like sit- I like pop music and all that shit. All of that stuff is, is it's all necessary. Have you got the opportunity to sit in with a band that you like and drum with a band that you like? Uh, yeah, I've I've sit in with people that I like. I wasn't necessarily in the band, but yeah. Uh, Who did you play with? And is it recorded? Uh, yeah, I'll t- I'll tell you. One of the crazier ones was I got to play with Duff and Slash from Guns N' Roses, and I didn't know it was going to happen. And Dave, is that on YouTube right now? It's somewhere out there. Yeah. So let's look at it. Don't play that, Jesus no. Christ. Why? Because I don't want to watch myself drumming. Because <laughs> I just look like a dad at a fucking Make-A-Wish camp. And <laughs> Duff and Slash and Dave Kushner and Frankie Perez. That how did, was how like did that the, come to be? Dave Kushner, uh, who's in Velvet Revolver and is now uh, an incredible composer uh, for film and television. He composed everything for F is for Family. Um, um, Your Netflix show. Yes, the cartoon that I did. So he is a really big hearted guy, uh, a big family guy. Like I'm really good friends with him. And, and like I become, he's one of those people I became friends with, I became a better person because I like how he lives his life, you know? So he goes, hey, you know, he goes, my, my kids school they go to, we're doing like a fundraiser. So I'm gonna put together a band. And it was like, there was the rehearsal band he didn't let me know Duff and Slash were coming. That was the joke. So I was going to play Highway to Hell, right? ACDC song. So he went up and rehearsed during the day, and everything went great. And he goes, all right, cool. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll play the song tonight. And I go, okay, fantastic. So I come back at, at night. So it's my turn to go up on drums. And I'm thinking, like, I'm, I was watching, like, I remember I was late in the show, and it made no sense to me. I was like, why wouldn't you get the stupid comic out of the way early? Why would you put him way late? And, like, I remember the drummer was, was played with Blue Man Group. He was a fucking beast. He was playing the Who, all this Keith Moon shit. I'm like, I can't fuck. Why the fuck are they waiting? So it was like towards the end of the night. So they bring me up on stage. And I was so, like, I made sure I got on stage before he even introduced me because I was so, like, like, just outside my element. And as I sit down, I see the bass player and the guitar player leaving. And then Duff and Slash come up on stage. And I'm telling you, like, how big these guys were to me as a kid, them standing there, they look like two redwoods. I just remember how big they were. And Duff, I had met one other time, I forget. I think that was the second time I met him. And he's totally cool. He just sort of, and he's tall anyway. He's kind of leaned over and said, hey man, shook my hand. <laughs> Slash was there. And I was like, and Dave just turned around, laughed at me. Cause I had that look on my face of like, what the fuck? And before I could even think anything, like Slash starts. Cause it starts with the guitar. And like for the whole first verse, I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And uh, it ended up going great. I don't think I fucked up. And it ended. 
I got off and uh, I got to meet the guys. It was, was fantastic. And I remember it was the most rock and roll thing I ever did. And then I immediately did the least rock and roll thing was I got in my Prius and I <laughs> whoosh, whoosh, drove down the hill as I was screaming. So I go to the store to go smoke a cigar with some buddies of mine. I remember I got out of the car and I'm literally flying. I couldn't believe it happened. And uh, I get out of the car and the guy was... Uh, he goes, uh, he goes, hey, Bill, you want to do a spot? I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not fucking that up. I'm not going to go up here and then have a me mediocre. I'm going to ride this as long as I can. And I stayed back there. And like during the time I was telling the comics that it happened, he sent me the video and they watched it. They were like, what the fuck? It was the greatest night of my life. And it, I stayed up till like three in the morning. So at three in the morning, I get back in my Prius. And as I'm driving out, I'm stopping, looking for traffic. And this gorgeous woman comes up to my passenger window and knocks on the window. I'm like, oh, can my night get any better? She's a big fan, right? You think you're amusing, don't you? No, I no. put the window down and she stuck her head and she was hammered. She goes, are you Enrique, my Uber driver? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I fucking like paused and she took in my Iris features. I'm not an Enrique and I just go, uh, no, no, I'm not. And she laughed and I laughed and it was just like, boom, I turned back into a pumpkin and I was a dad and a fucking, uh, I guess I wasn't a dad before that, but whatever. I was just some guy in his forties in a Prius and I fucking laughed the whole way home. And I really took that as like something from the universe. Like, all right, come back down. You know, That's don't, an amazing don't, story. don't be walking we'll, around like we'll have in post, we'll have showed the audience this tape. We won't do it in front of you, but yeah. what a great story. What a great moment. And yeah, so I've, I've had, uh, uh so I, I, I've done that a couple of times where I've gotten to play, uh, you know, with some just insane people and, uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but it's do, happened. Do you fly yourself <laughs> to gigs in their helicopter? No, there's just too many, like, like, I mean, I, I've, I've done it a couple of times, <laughs> but it's just like going all the way up there, pre-flighting it, you know, doing all of that shit. By the time you land it, you know. I would have thought you would have done that at Fenway. You would land. What an, what an entrance, like the Beatles. Oh, I mean, also like what an asshole. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's like, aren't you doing like enough? I mean, but having said that, like as far as like a performer not having to deal with traffic, I mean, that's fucking amazing. But uh, <laughs> my thing now is I, I, I'm, uh, st I've been flying around the LA basin for the longest time and I'm now starting to trying to go like up more up to like wine country and stuff like that. And it's just gorgeous flying up, um, you know, past Santa Barbara and San Inez up to, Paso Robles and all that. It's gorgeous. It's how fast gorgeous. does a how long does it take to fly? How fast does a helicopter go per hour? Like, uh, I mean, the fastest ones I think are only 130 knots. We don't. We're not anywhere near as fast as a plane because I don't know what knots. How about how, what's well, that in miles it's, per well, hour? It depends on what the wind is doing. That's all that weird shit because you could be doing 120 knots. It's reading that, but you got an 80 knot headwind. So cars are passing you on the ground. That's the fucking worst day ever. <laughs> That's the worst day ever when the cars are going faster than you back in the day when I was when I was training in those little R22s. You get a you're like just this little fucking egg beater, and you just be looking down, seeing the same car the whole way. It's like I thought the point of this was that it was faster. So um, you know if you got like a tailwind or something, I mean it's over like a hundred miles an hour or, or whatever. Um, it's kind of hard to to answer that question because there is. Because that's really what flying, all flying is, is just little adjustments to whatever the wind is doing. Cause it's, and is your wife and kids, are they happy to fly with you or are they scared? I've never flown with them. I don't do that. Oh, really? You've never? Because you're scared? Huh? Because you're scared? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going all in like fucking, here comes the river, you know? Like <laughs> World Series of Poker. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, no, but there's this sort of, I feel like there's an unwritten rule in private aviation. It's either I just go or we all go. It seems to kind of be like the thing, like either I'm going to solo this thing or fly with friends. But if if we're going, you know, everybody's going to die. So nobody has to have. <laughs> it's, That's yeah. a rule. Well, there's a happy. Ending. I know. But you know something? It's an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly safe hobby. It's just that people like you don't like you don't think when you get in a car, I could die today. You just don't. I do. You just don't think it. I do. I, you, you don't. I do. You do. Yeah. But I have anxiety. Oh, okay. This All right. Well, the, apple didn't, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. All right. So then what, uh, 
Because I never think that. I never think when I get in my car, I could die. Every time I go to fly a helicopter, I get this feeling in my stomach like, dude, you know, like be on point. You know, and I, and I go through all this whole mental checklist in my head of what I'm about to go do. I go through the whole flight in my head. I look at the wind. I look at all of that shit, the weather, you know, of wherever I'm going. And I just make sure. And then I also do, um, you know, auto rotations a lot, which is. Uh, we don't know what it's, that it's, is. It's a simulated. Um, it's a simulated uh, engine failure. Here's my thing. I'm scared of flying. Specific especially helicopters. Right. And I know everyone can tell me over and over again, way safer than driving, like way less chance of accidents happening. But the thing is, if there is some kind of accident and you're up there, the chances of surviving are way less than if you're on the ground and there's an accident. No? Uh, well, ground, cars are really safe. So that, that might be true. That might <laughs> yeah. be true. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Point no, but, but here's the thing. The <laughs> odds of it happening, I think, I think, I think, uh, Helicopters and airplanes are are infinitely more uh, maintained. You don't do any. You would hope. No, you do. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's jerk offs. There's no. There's always jerk offs. <laughs> where do you keep your helicopter? Uh, uh, at an airport. I'm not gonna say where, but no, I, no, no, I, no. But I'm, with yeah. a with a company that maintains it, or do you maintain it, or do you do work on I, it? I have a. Uh, a mechanic that um, maintains it. So because I talked to, we had Jeff Dunham on here who builds his own. Helicopters. Yeah, now see that guy. That guy's next level. That guy's a fucking genius, man. He is. He builds like, puppets and helicopters. I, know. I don't Cause, know that. Cause I, you know what I didn't realize what? is if you went to a store and bought a puppet and put even put different clothes on it, and you got famous off of it. The company that made the puppet can claim. Yeah, that's what he was so, saying. That's why so, he started yeah. making his own. And he got like the 3D screen and that giant microwave that bakes the thing, and then he yeah. like paints it, dude. I mean. That he's amazing. He's like the, yeah, that guy is like beautiful mind, like genius level guy. He really is. He really is. I saw and some really documentary on him and I was just going like, this is, uh, this is unfucking believable. Yeah. I become friendly with him and I'm, he's, he blows me away every time I talk to him about what he's done and he's kind of humble about it. But I went to his place to see where he builds his puppets and, and there's three helicopters or there's, you know, he's not too far from here. He's a couple blocks from here and mm -hmm. he builds and works on his own helicopters, which would, you know, I took flying lessons. I took, uh, I tried to be a pilot and the teacher told me that I don't have the, uh, attention span, right? I used to look, even in the middle of that story, I went away. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, I have, I have ADD, but I don't up there. I do. It, it gets, and I'm it, colorblind. It, it, ADD to me is when I'm bored. Well, well I like got bored I, up if there. If I'm doing something where I could die, I mean, you put like if I ride a motorcycle or something like that, I'm fucking, you know. Do you ride a motorcycle? Uh, I did back in the, only for like, I, I got a license and I rode it for six weeks and it was too dangerous out here. And I just rode one for the first time in like 11 years, but I rode it at a, at a, on a track. So there was, you know, fast. How fast did you go? No, nah, just like 140 knots. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was like, whatever. But it was like, I, I am, I, I am, I lo I'm a love, I love machines. They fascinate me. I'm not good at working on them or anything, but like the physics of them and how they work and, and like, but, I'm into racing and all of that type of stuff. Just sort of like, you know, helicopters are cool though. They are. Yeah. I used to fly in them a lot. I liked being in them. I liked that feeling mm -hmm. of just dangling. And then I got scared when. Too many people I know had accidents. So be careful. All right. Well, shit. <laughs> well, everybody knows. That it just seems like more dangerous than an airplane. Uh, okay. You figure if your engine stops. Is it? And, you would know. You would know. Is it? Is it? No, because there's all of this. It's like... Uh, <laughs> It's like a political debate. It's just like both sides are just yelling at each other, like planes are safe from da, 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 and they're just like, and then cars versus that. It's just like, uh, well, there's you know bigger chance of dying in a car because there's way more fucking cars. And then we go, well, yeah, you're also like when I'm up there flying, there's nobody near me. You're driving down the highway. It's like you're in the Blue Angels flying in formations with people that in states where weed is legal, they're fucking high. They're looking at their phones. The amount of time, I will say the amount of times that I've soloed, landed on the pad, tucked it away, had no problem, and then got on the highway like, what the fuck? And some guy hits, you know. But I'm talking fixed the wing versus a helicopter. If they both have an engine failure, what would you rather be in? Listen, I'm not going to get dragged into your guys' anxieties. I'm and sorry. Just, like, <laughs> not have a good time with my hobbies, okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what you guys, not you guys should, what is, is it actuary? Who are the guys who just try to figure out the, the probability it's of death? It's actuary. You guys should have done that. Should have been your calling. <laughs> well, we were hoping you would do it and we would save some money, but you won't do that for us. You are an amazing- I have a, I have a question. You said that you decide, you know what you're not good at, therefore you didn't waste your time on it and you're not gonna move forward with it. Do you think that you'll do the same thing with your kids? Let's say your kids have a hobby and they're interested in something. Mm -hmm. If they're not good, are you gonna tell them like, mm, mm, maybe this isn't for you? No. I can't wait to see you at a dance that's, recital. No, that's that's. <laughs> I went to a lot of dance recitals. It's a fucking. No, nightmare. I was good at dance. No, I, know. I was good at dance. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's their journey. So you, you try not to like get in the way of it. So I, my thing is that expose them to a bunch of stuff that I like if they're into it. Okay, you know, and just I don't know my my. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of the things that I'm going to tell them is the stuff that I told you guys. I yeah. won't say that God's a cunt, but I'll. I'll, I'll <laughs> How do you say that to the kids? I w no, but I will. I will tell them. Like, don't let organized religion ruin your life and Is and 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 fill you with all of these fears and like, uh, you know, it's funny. I was just talking to this comic the the other day, and somehow we were talking about like uh, award shows and all of that. I go, don't get caught up in any of that shit. That's all fucking. It's all bullshit. It doesn't mean anything, and it's like. You know, the, the number one thing you have to protect is saying what you want to say. That's what's going to make you feel good at the end. If you start rounding off the edges so you can win the fucking shiny thing, I, I mean, I mean, for some people, maybe that works, but the number one thing you have to protect is, is that voice in your head of what you want, what makes you feel good, and when you don't like what somebody else is doing. That's basically it, and you got to protect that thing and everything else. I mean... What kind of an adult wants to win a trophy? It's just the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> like, what well, are you, you said we're all still the kids that we were back when we were kids. So maybe it's still those kids that want you to always win the trophy. The, you always got a trophy. You made it, we make it important. We made it important. Raising our children and the people who raised us made it important. It's still they those gave us ribbons. They gave us a, trophies. and now this, this generation even got a trophy for participating. Right? Oh, that. Yeah, but they, they get blamed for it, but we came up with it. We came up with it because we lost and we remembered what it felt like. So it came from a place of love. And right. then, and we did it and we did it to them. And now we're, we're doing more like what God does. Like he makes like a pedophile, right? And <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> it's taking another turn. And then turning. he blames the victims for their fucked up lives afterwards. And it's just like, we're doing the same thing. We're like, stick with me on this I'm, I'm trying so they fucking we make this participation trophy out of love because we don't want any kid feel like they didn't they're not winners and then when they end up being soft we then yell at them for being soft that's what i'm saying that's like what god does he makes fucking serial killers and fucked up people that hurt people and then the damaged people are now fucked up and then they hurt more people and then you die and then he judges you like what the fuck and it's just like well if you worked a little harder and made some better people. <laughs> it's well, full circle. This what, was your, what, was your, what was your question? I, Listen, how are you going to raise your kid? Like, is, is it that you, you, don't, <laughs> you don't like what I'm saying? And you're <laughs> acting like you don't know what I'm saying. You know I what, don't, I'm, I, I know I what know. I'm saying. I know. Oh, I know. my God. What? Bob's big boy. Is he down the fucking street, but he's actually right here? Is that a hologram? <laughs> it is a hologram. That's a guy named Cookie who does art. And he, he, he made that for me. That's actually Bobby's, I did Bobby's World. I also did an animated show. I know you Not did. Not for family. Because that was the thing. When I was pitching an animated show, no one was doing one. And I kept saying, I'm like, Bill Cosby did one. Howie Mandel, good right. company, right? A <laughs> rapist, a Jew. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all our fault that's because this, we got that's trophies. That's what this city was built on. <laughs> <laughs> rapists and Jews. Jews. Yeah. Rapists and Jews. Yeah. But who created them all? The cunt. The cunt. Wow, this is this is like a, this is a beautiful afternoon, and and you know what's even makes it more special that I get to spend it with my daughter, just spending time. You with You guys my have a wonderful relationship, and I feel the love between the two of you. Even we actually that, do. Yeah, we yeah, actually do. See. And you know what? I I feel the when you said out of everything that we talked about, when you said the goal is to go home and sit on that back porch and look at your kids in the pool. That kind of in what sums who you are, what's important to you, and where your heart is, and I think that's the thing that I respect most about everything I've seen and heard and experienced with you. That kind of uh, tells me 
what kind of human being, and ultimately, what kind of a human being you are supersedes what trophies you've won, what success you have, how much cash you have in the bank, and how infamous you could possibly be. Or illuminous. I never illustrious. looked at- Illustrious. Illustrious, sorry. <laughs> illuminous is, what is illuminous? I don't even know that's what, what I thought illustrious was, like, like it was a light. <laughs> what is illustrious? We didn't even look I that did up. I did tell you. Oh, I forgot. Okay, I'll go we back. We can end on a d defiant. Illustrious is well-known, respected, and admired for past achievements. Not for anything <laughs> you're doing right now. I like how you grew up out here and you have like East Coast jaded, like <laughs> you feel like you've dealt with the four seasons. <laughs> She's had it rough. She grew up with me as a dad. Illuminous is she didn't have it easy. They went bright, to public. Clear. They went to public school. Doesn't obsolete mean like it's 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 outlived its usefulness? I don't know. Go ahead. Bright and clear. You're a teacher. I mean, it's show all us over what the you place. do. You know, right, she's a teacher. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. There. There you go. Hey. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. We've, uh, we actually finished the podcast. Oh, we did. Okay. You know, I think we did. How do you feel? Did you? Did I this, thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I think this was, I felt bad the last time that you were on. Why? Were you annoyed by my friend Lou? No, I loved him. Uh, me too. But I got killed in the, uh, in the comments to go, uh, to say. You don't read thought, comments. I do. He does. I do. He cares about what people think. Well, I cared about what they said, and they he cares said about what they say about him. No, they thought that they were that he was rude to you. That's what I cared about. I no. don't care if you write and you yeah. say you don't give a fuck about me and you hate what I do. I don't really care because I know who I am. But when they wrote that they, <laughs> no, I don't. I know who I am. If you don't like me, you don't like that me. That sounded like a monologue from a soap opera. You say whatever you want, but I know who I am. <laughs> and then, and then you hold as they go to commercial. But but no, you look out, or you turn around, you look out the window. Is that what they do? There was a comedian, John Bush, had a great bit about that. I never heard that bit. But my point was, I'll tell you why I felt bad. I did read the comments, and people said I was disrespectful of you. So if you felt disrespected then that's what I feel. I feel bad if you felt like I disrespected you by having you. If I felt disrespected by you, I would have said something to you. Well, you didn't say anything to me and you left. And the next time I asked you to do the podcast, you said no, because it's that's a hologram. That's not what happened. But I felt bad. That's and I just want to tell you. That's not what happened. We'll be right back with, that's not what happened. Did you know he was a singer? No. I only sing when people are lying to me. Is that another <laughs> hobby that you decided you weren't that good at? Am I lying to you? <laughs> I, <did. laughs> um, I don't think I'm lying to you. I no, know you, you said, hey, you want to, I'm in Montreal. Right. I'm going to be there when you're there. Do you want to do my podcast? Right. And I said, yes, that's what you said. Right. Yeah. And then I showed up and you go, now here's the thing. I'm not going <laughs> to fucking be there. I'm like, what do you mean you're not going to be there? And he's <laughs> like, and he's like, oh, I'm all nervous about COVID. It's like, well, so am I. I showed up. <laughs> Hey, we're going to go to war together, but you're gonna actually going to be there with the bullet zipping by your head, and I'm going to be fucking here in this mirror. I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. But I also thought that you were going to be like, like projected down from like a flashlight, yeah. like no. in, in uh, My Favorite Martian or something. Would it have made a difference if you knew what the hologram was? Would you have shown up if you knew that it was... It probably wouldn't have because I didn't like that he wasn't honest from the beginning. He didn't say it. He, he, he did that thing like, you know, he gave me like, you know... The so then truth. I did the disrespect. The, 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 the so I, I yeah, but did, they didn't see that. I thought it was because of that. They don't. They don't see what you're like when the cameras are off. I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm maybe, a, so then I apologize if if I didn't mean to. Do you think I actually? After I just said I'm not doing that, I just moved on with my life. I wasn't sitting there like that hologram <laughs> do you motherfucker. Know, do you know what he ended up doing? He what? ended up having my brother just going into the hallway and pulling comics saying, oh, my dad, I sent is, my a, children there. My dad is a huge fan. He wants to say hi to you. And then they'd come into the room and there would just be the hologram machine. And they're like, what's this? And then they were forced to do a podcast. A lot of angry people. Yeah. <laughs> Go look at that episode. It's a, it says how he crashes a, a, a comedy. Every comedian I'm talking to is really like, angry. What is going on? Yeah. I thought you were fucking here. Yeah. 
See, and that, <laughs> that would have been me. Yeah. That would have been me. They were saying everything. Yeah, I thought you And were it's here. an episode that has probably the lowest count I've had in the two years that I've been on as a podcast. Right. Well, next time I go to Montreal, if you want to beam in, I'll No, I will always... Uh, you know what I loved? I love that you were honest with me. You were the, you were the, like a straight shooter. You are... I'm afraid of people. I am afraid. So I don't... You're right. I, I yeah, don't think I... you track what you fear. So if somebody is acting like that and you don't do anything, then they just get more and more in your life like a virus. You just have to fucking, you know, how many people do you need in your life? Three, four, beyond your family? Well, there's there's more than that in my family. Oh, beyond the family. Yeah. I, I just need, I just don't need, I'm afraid of negative energy is what I'm afraid of. And there's a lot of it out there. And I think just by virtue <laughs> of what we do, we attract negative energy, right? So I'm afraid of that. Because I'm like a fucking magnet. Think. I'm like a magnet, so that negative energy sends me into tailspins. So the fact that I thought that they convinced- I don't think you're a magnet. I think you're in here. I am, and that's okay. a problem, well, and that, I'm medicated. That, that, that makes you think that you are. You're not. You're not. You're just, but that's you're my, just that's a why guy I need... with John Lennon glasses walking down the street. People tell me <laughs> that it looks like- rim, They look like rim. condom rims. <laughs> <laughs> These are actually my own line of glasses. <laughs> at Howie so if Mandel. you want com. condom rim glasses too. <laughs> All my glasses. I have my own line of glasses. But but I, I'm I, I do overthink, and I really and I was afraid to say it. Those to look you. like the glasses uh, Dustin Hoffman had in Papillon. <laughs> That's the second 60-year-old movie you've brought up in the last hour. That is a fucking incredible movie. I, I love stand that by. movie. Steve I love McQueen, it. Dustin oh, Hoffman. Oh, that's amazing. And yeah. why do you bring that up? Are you trying to escape from here? No. no. Okay. See how I take things? I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive. I'm overly sensitive. But I love Does you. Does that mean self-involved? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now I'm afraid that you all think I'm self- I've been- uh, This is like no. my worst- No, no, it's been, fu it's been fun. Everybody liked it. Just, <laughs> how do you know? Just- Have you read the comments? <laughs> Land the plane here. Don't, don't- Here's what I want to say, not only to you, but to you. I respect this guy. And if I do anything that could be construed as disrespect, it was done unintentionally. And I, I love you. I love what you stand for. Yeah, I, I knew you. Him. I knew that you were a germaphobe lunatic. I couldn't believe that you were going to be up there. I should have known there was going to be some sort of Star Trek shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take some of the blame for that. I sent my kids. My son was there dragging people in against oh, them. Oh, God, that's like some su succession shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going in there, but I will save my, I will send my children. <laughs> it's like Sophie's Choice. <laughs> I sent Alex. It was he, more like Howie's choice and how he <laughs> chose himself. I did. <laughs> I wish you nothing but success. All the things that we're not allowed to talk about, I hope they are incredible successes. I feel I the will, same. When I'm you. allowed to, I will do whatever I can. You send me stuff, I will post One it. One quick I will regret push I have. It. When we did that fucking COVID room and we were in the round and you came up and we started talking to each other, I got off stage out of respect for you and all the comments were like, oh my God, I thought you two guys were going to start riffing up there. Where? When we were, uh, the, the uh, oh, Bob Saget? No. No, not Bob Saget. The, the uh, Bob Saget thing, you just remember, Bob Saget that night you got up with, you were hysterical with uh, Chappelle. Oh, yeah. Chappelle called you up. Bob Saget has a, a, a charity. Scleroderma. Scleroderma. Scleroderma mm -hmm. Which was a funny, weird night. I, I, I don't know if you remember, but the, some woman that was giving away, like a Michelin, she's a Michelin chef. And mm -hmm. she was giving away a dinner and they were auctioning it off and the money would go to uh, do scleroderma. And she ended up speaking. She goes, I don't have anybody in my family. And a scleroderma is, uh, uh, you die from it. Right. And, but it, it shows up on your, uh, I think everything turns to calcifies, you know, your organs and your skin. And it's kind of an ugly disease. And she mm -hmm. said, listen, I've never had anybody in my family or a friend that had scleroderma, but uh, I had, I grew up when I had, I had an eczema. So I kind of know. Do you remember she said that? <laughs> Do you remember she said that? And then I went up and my whole routine was about like, there's not enough of a spotlight put onto eczema. Oh <laughs> my God. Wait, was I there? That, that was last year. Yeah. That was last year. Yeah. Then? And then Chappelle went on after me and you, he called you up on stage and you guys were reminiscing and it, it was a, you were, it was a, a an Thank God. I was stone sober. Thank God. Cause I, you know, if I, if I was still drinking, I would have been, uh, you know, a couple drinks in and that wouldn't have gone that well. But you killed it. You killed it. The improv and the moment, it was like you were the highlight. 
of the evening. That was an amazing, uh, amazing moment, and just the brilliance. Just oh, thank you, Sean, on you that night. But uh, what were you talking about when we were in a? COVID I was saying room? so people were. Uh, uh, What's a COVID supernova? Room? Supernova that when the parking lot. Oh people yeah, like, yeah. Then the comments were going. Ah, I thought you guys were going to improv, and I was thinking, do you think you would have done that with me? I would have loved to. All right. Well, no, okay. All right. That's good to know. All right. So, so if you ever want that, I would never, I don't have the psyche to, um, like if I go, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Burr, did I bring you, I brought you up, right? No, I brought you, you up. You brought me up. So it, it would not matter. But I felt your energy. The energy was like, do you want it? And I was like, is it okay? But all that unspoken thing. And I was just like, it's fucking Howie Mandeli. I mean, I know he's got stuff to say. I don't want to, I don't want to like. Feel like you I'm in so by, by the, you, off. You're in your head, and that's always been your problem. <laughs> Thank you. You noticed it. Why the fuck are you so oh, sensitive? I have a lot of anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to get my over past. it. These, yeah. these fucking bald, anxious guys. I can't stand them. But I would never <laughs> want to, you know, uh, say, "Hey, stay here." Like, and and you know, I don't want to infringe on your time. And if I brought you up. Or you brought me up. I just don't want to take your space and your time and your time to shine. Well, that's but how I would felt about you sharing an, a stage with you would be a, a highlight. It really would, even if it All went right. badly for me. You know, it okay. would be it'd be because that's kind of fun. And that, no, it is. What but, last thing you want to do as a comedian is your act, right? It's absolutely. Just like, yeah, I just, absolutely. I just I love, love you, buddy. So right, anytime, you too, are you man. doing those local gigs? Uh, uh, the other day, I saw your name up on the comedy store, and then you weren't there. Are you st you weren't there, right? What was what night did we see his name? Oh up? yeah, yeah. No, there was a conf I I put it down. I came down the wrong. Oh my god. Oh my god. I came down the wrong night. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this shit. I I go down the wrong night and I come walking in and the host is like, "Oh dear," and I'm like, "What?" And she's just going like, "This is like a benefit," and I'm like, "All right." And she said for like battered women, and I'm like. Well, what do you think I'm gonna do? I'll, I'm fine. I'm right. She goes, "You're supposed to come down tomorrow night. This is like a a, a, a benefit, f you know, for battered women." And right. I was like, oh, "You no. don't want to talk about the cunt." Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, "I'll be fine." I go, "Whatever, whatever. I'll just do it tonight." So I went out there and I was doing my shit, and then I just kept teasing them about getting, you know, battered. Uh, no, I was just saying, you know, you guys, you guys getting shit and thrown around the room. I wasn't like you, and I just kept making that, and it wasn't getting the laugh I thought it was gonna get. <laughs> and then finally, some of the end just goes, "We're not battered." We're alcoholics. <laughs> I, I, oh. I had heard it. I had heard it the wrong way, and I go, "Oh, well, you guys are a bunch of drunks!" And then they laugh. Ah, you're my people. I, I thought you guys. Oh, that's so you guys, funny. Yeah, because because I think the I, host didn't know that they were. It was, no, no, I just was. Once she went like, "Oh my god!" Like, like, "Oh no!" Whatever she said, I just you know my ears closed up. I couldn't. But I, I, <laughs> and she was all worried. And she said it was a benefit. So I just immediately thought, well, it's got to be something for women. And they're worried I'm going to say some misogynistic shit if it's like a feminist thing. So I, I don't know what I heard. <laughs> but, I play yeah. drums and fly helicopters, so I don't know what the fuck I heard. That's I, like I, a, a great Theo Vaughn story, I, I, which I talked to him about. You know Theo? Yes. Theo, one of the, the funniest stories I've ever heard is years ago, he got asked to host a benefit for um, 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 Kirk Douglas. You remember Kirk Douglas? Oh, yeah. And at the end of his life, Kirk Douglas had a had had a stroke. Yeah. And Kirk Douglas, for younger people, was a movie star of the 40s and 50s. Michael Douglas is his son. And Ben Hur. He, yeah, Ben Hur. And do you know this story? No, but I'm. Uh, this is riveting. <laughs> the is second it? I hear th this comedian has a great story about, and there's a benefit. I know that just this. There's well, endless he got, stories about comedians with at, at benefits. Well, he got he got the the message to show up at the Beverly Hills Hotel on his answering machine. Stuffy crowd, and he heard, you, "We want you to roast this benefit for Kirk Douglas, <laughs> not he, host, not her host." He heard oh roast. My God. And you know, they uh, first Kirk <laughs> Douglas went up to thank everybody for being there, and he's you know yeah. incredibly impaired. He couldn't speak. Oh, God. And then Theo Vaughn went up <laughs> to host and goes, what kind of fucking movie star? He's, he can't even, he can't even, there's no consonants. <laughs> he has no consonants. Everything's I, I, O, U. Like, what is this? And um, what's her name that was Norma Ray? Who played Norma Ray? Um, Sally Field. Ran up on stage, pulled him off the stage, said, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and they had him leave the building. 
Oh my God. Yeah, and he said his career went into the toilet for like a month after that. It's a great story. Ask him if you ever bump into him. He'll tell, he's, I think Dude, he's told the story. I, I, he, he, yeah, that we did an episode that here. Him and I'm mortified. I'm just like vicariously living through that. And like Sally Field, I love Sally Field. And I'm like, and she's like, would be upset with you? Like, what oh, the yeah. fuck? He told the story on my podcast. The episode I gotta watch with Theo that. Vaughn, watch. It's like, he's really serious about it. But Can anyway. Can you just fucking die already? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were great. Wait, was Michael there? Yeah, That's an intimidating yeah. dude, man. Michael Douglas is yeah. the man. We didn't talk about Michael, but wh why? Have you met him and been intimidated by him? No, I just, I just, that guy's like, you know, all, all the way back to streets of San Francisco is when I first saw him. And he's always, you know, picked great projects. And I just, I think. You know what's I, weird? I did uh, St. Elsewhere in the 80s. And the, my boss, the executive producer was Bruce Paltrow. And then <laughs> Br Bruce Paltrow is um, Gwyneth Paltrow's father. Uh -huh. who I've known since she was like 10 years old and before she was an actress. And then Bruce Paltrow ran Michael Douglas's company before he, you know, uh, Bruce Paltrow passed away of throat cancer. But before uh -huh. that, he ran Michael Douglas's movie company. He was his mm -hmm. development executive and directed some movies. And I always thought it was weird. It, there was one movie where um, Gwyneth Paltrow was Mike Douglas's, Michael Douglas's, um, love interest where he was you know intimate geez this took a and, fucking left turn i was just trying to say like michael douglas now we're under oh you hollywood people you hollywood all i'm beard. saying is don't cast jackie in any of your movies where you're going to be <laughs> where you're both going to be naked on screen and have me produce it that's all i'm saying go to howiemandel.com okay. subscribe comment buy the merch <laughs> go to bill bill i did go to bill burr.com <laughs> And he's got that southern accent. So like, oh, this guy's going to be all wholesome and stuff. Like, hey, how y'all doing? Jesus Christ, how fucking old is this son of a bitch? <laughs> You're going to be in Czechoslovakia when? Uh, in September. Okay, so check that out. Check that out. Got it? Dad jokes. We're both dads. Yeah. We are Thank dads. You, we should be telling dad jokes. That's what we said. The two packs. Thank you, buddy, no for worries. coming in.